how's your summer going? <laughs> I hope it's going well. And then maybe you've gotten out for a bike ride. Um, so let's support you go for a long bike ride, a long, a long straight path. And you ride for two hours at five miles per hour. Okay. And then you ride, ride for four hours at four miles per hour. And then finally you ride for three hours at seven miles per hour. Okay. In this example, we're asked to sketch a graph of velocity versus time, and then, um, figure out how many miles you rode. All right. So, okay. Sounds easy enough. We'll sketch it. Um, so we rode at, uh, we rode at, uh, five miles per hour for two hours. Okay. So that looks like that, right? It's constant five miles per hour. At least that's all the information we have. All right. And then, um, for the next four hours, you rode at four miles per hour. Okay. So that's down here. And then finally, the last three hours, you're riding at seven miles per hour. So up here. Okay. So that's a sketch of the graph. And then we want to find out how many miles we rode. Now, I didn't need to sketch a graph to figure out how many miles we rode. I know that if I take the velocity, or in this, the speed, the rate of in which we're covering distance, and I take it times time, right, I get the distance, right? So I could figure out that the, the distance that I traveled is equal to, all right, we rode for two hours at five miles per hour. So... That's five miles per hour times two hours. Okay, so for that segment, um, I can figure out how far I rode just by taking five times two. Right? And then I'm going to add to that. Um, I went for four hours at four miles per hour. So, um, you know, I can just multiply those in order to get the total distance. And then finally, um, I went seven miles per hour for um, three hours. Okay. So I can multiply those seven times three in order to figure out how far I went during that last segment. Okay. So what do I get? I got 10 plus 16 plus 21, which gives me a total of 47 miles. All right. Now, you know, we're done with the problem. We're done with everything that we were asked to do in this problem, but, um, the reason this problem is in, in uh, this uh, lecture is because I want to emphasize the fact that um, we can integrate velocity in order to find the distance. We can essentially take the uh, area under the velocity curve to find distance. And that's essentially what we did, right? If I look at this first segment, I have a rectangle, right? And it's two hours long by five miles per hour high, right? So the area of this rectangle area is equal to five times two, which is 10. And that's the distance that we covered, right? It's that's 10 miles. All right. And then we look at the second, uh, period of time here. Um, we went for, uh, four hours at four miles per hour. And so you can see that the area under the graph here is just four out uh, four miles per hour at times four hours and we get 16 we get 16 miles okay and then the last segment you can see is just a rectangle the area under the velocity graph is a rectangle and the area represents the distance so area the area of this rectangle is just um seven miles per hour times three hours and that means it's 21 miles so that that segment, that, that area represents 21 miles. Okay. And then we just add it all up and we get the total distance that we went. So the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that the distance from your starting point, okay, the change in, essentially the change in distance, right, um, is the area under the graph. So, um, so this is the basis of the integral and there's really a, not a whole lot, um, new in this section. This is sort of this whole section um, that we're covering today is just um, a review of um, the basis for the integral. Okay. Um, and you are probably familiar. We're going to talk about Riemann sums. We're going to talk about left hand and right hand Riemann sums. So go ahead and look at this next example. And I will um, just to familiarize yourself with it. And we'll, um, we'll, uh, 
I'll, I'll be back. You can watch the next video and we'll go over um, how Raymond sums work.